So, um, yes, uh, as already mentioned, um, I work at uh, Tesa. I think it's uh, a well-known company for, uh, I think, in, in Germany, 89% of all Germans, at least, uh, know Tesa. And, um, yeah, me as, as a private person, I'm, I was born in Berlin. Uh, I now live in Hamburg since five years. I uh, went over, over here for, for Tesa. I'm married. I'm, I'm a father of the greatest son of the world. And I'm more or less addicted to sports. And despite all that, um, I have an I have own company, a publishing uh, company, and um, I'm, I'm an author of several books. Um, yeah. And um, let's, as we do not have that much time, I ju jump directly in the topic and um, let's speak about uh, uh, digitalization of CRM and why I think we should uh, rethink entirely. And um, what I what I observe or what I see currently is that um, we quite often follow principles. We often think uh, it's about CRM. Um, and we have people sticking to CRM. They have a system software in place and working with it. And then we have this still rising trend, uh, rising trend or customer experience. And people follow or work with customer experience. And um, think, no, we do now customer experience. We do not anymore doing CRM or social CRM or customer engagement. And I, I think we, sh we should not um, follow those principles or only those principles. I think in the future, we need to see those principles as, as a mixture, uh, something we need to combine to achieve our goals. And um, this is very important because um, all of those principles have a lack of something wherever. For example, CRM, as, as you maybe all know, uh, focus on customer groups, customer experiences, focusing on individuals. And um, of course, uh, most of the companies do need to analyze customer groups because they, they don't can care about all individuals. Uh, and um, of course, we need customer experience. And of course, sometimes we need to engage our customers a little bit. Um, and I think it should be in future a mixture of it. Um, interesting fact here is um, we have so many, so many possibilities, so many ways of, of how we are, how we could go. With, um, but um, we still struggle with the same things since, I don't know, 10, 15 or 20 years. And especially marketing today, they're struggling with a lot of things. I just mentioned uh, some of them here. Um, for example, when you work in marketing, you know what I'm speaking about. Um, you would like to have relief from all the IT integration projects. Whenever you have a new tool, um, you would like to um, add to your system, IT system landscape. And to combine it with other tools, um, you have an IT integration project running for, I don't know, minimum 10 or 20 days, maybe more. And uh, it takes weeks, months, sometimes years until you can work with the software. And um, more or less, you're never conform to governance and compliance. You, have, you struggle with it. You have enorm sometimes enormous quantities of customer data, which you're not able to access or analyze or whatsoever. And um, yeah, a couple of more reasons. Um, you, lots of companies are still struggling, and um, the problem here is it gets more and more and more complicated. And on the other end, we have more principles we could use. We we, we could do customer experience, customer engagement, social CRM, CRM, um, but we were never able to solve some of the basic problems we currently have. And um, the question is how we can solve this. And of course we need to do, but before we come to one possible solution, I would like to mention or highlight some more topics I think we should be aware about um, to, to handle our customers ex as they expected. And um, yeah, just mention here four, four topics I think um, we should focus on. Um, with um, customer experience here in Germany, I think it's a trend not since five years, two or three years, maybe a little bit more, but it's still, a, as I mentioned already, a raising trend. Um, what is totally new for lots of companies is to combine all the personas, to combine all the touch points, the moment of truth, terms we know since, since quite a while, and um, to do all the customer journey mapping we have to combine personas and touch points and channels. Um, but we definitely have a lot of possibilities here, but on the other hand, we need to deal with this. 
raising complexity and it gets more and more and more. Of course, we now uh, have the possibility to um, to take care about individuals more than 20 years before or 15 years ago. Um, but the complexity is, is, is even more. And um, so we have to deal with this complexity. And then there is one thing more, a lot of companies um, do some kind of a mistake, I think. And um, I mentioned here uh, a couple of companies, you know, the terms GAFAM, Bertix, NATO, and um, they're all doing one thing right. I think a lot of companies are missing. And um, there is something a lot of companies think they should make it easy for their for their customers. But um, I'm pretty sure I personally, personally think um, that this is wrong because it's not about making it easy for customers um, because it's more important to give them a frictionless experience. And um, I give an example on this to explain this in detail because I really would like to highlight this point. And um, the example is think about a classic taxi experience. When you take a taxi and you reach your target destination, there are several things that always happens. You need to pay, you sometimes need and get the bill, the receipt, you um, you get your change, you say bye bye, step out of the car. Um, you, it's always the same process. And it's not about making it easy because there is nothing you can make easy. You need to pay, you get your change, um, maybe you get a, you, uh, give a tip. Um, the process is always the same, but the, the question is how you handle this process or how you make it available to the customer. And if you think about the classic taxi experience, it takes you maybe, let's say, two minutes until you are able, when you reach your target destination, to step out of the car. Um, but think about um, free now for my taxi um, with the app. It was possible um, to, I would say, to leave the car within 20 seconds because you have the app. You can decide about the tip. Um, you can pay by via the app and you leave the car within 20 seconds. Now let's um, go one step back. What we have here in the, down below Uber. Um, it takes you two or three seconds because you reach your target destination, you just step out and the app is doing all the rest. And this is what I mean uh, when I mean um, give the customer a frictionless experience because the process for those three examples is the same. You cannot make it easier. It's always the same process. The parts are always the same, but you can give a frictionless experience. And I think this is very important. Um, yeah, then we have this, uh, um, let's say, old uh, overview on, on the upper right corner. And it's, it's from May 2017. And it's very interesting um, because already three years ago, we had more than 5,000 marketing technologies you, you could use. And I think one thing that is definitely clear, and especially you guys from marketing know this, this is just an example for marketing, but I think we have the same for sales and for service. Um, we have so many possibilities and the problem here is um, you never know what is the best software. Maybe you know what is the best software today, but you don't know what is the best software tomorrow or a week later or whatsoever. So what you really need is to explore things. You need to license or download a new app, a new software, a new tool and integrate it into an IT system landscape. But in this case, really easy. And what you really need is some kind of plug and play solution uh, or some kind of plug and play um, because it's simply not possible to wait for 20 days or, or more until you have this, the tool uh, downloaded or licensed and integrated um, to get to know or to explore if this tool provides the functionalities you need to serve your customers well. Okay, and, uh, point number four. Um, I would like to highlight is, and I took here an example um, out of uh, a book, out of my books. Um, we we analyzed a couple of studies from political institutions here in Germany, from software vendors like Microsoft, Oracle, SAP, um, from world leading uh, consulting companies, and what what we tried to find out 
um, what are the digital initiatives they are su suggesting you should follow or you should do. And the interesting fact is, um, you ask 10 people, you get 12 opinions. As you know, we always have this problem, but still here with digital, uh, digital initiatives. And the problem is that you have a lot of deals to handle with, to, you need to deal with complexity. You should, from my personal assumption, uh, provide a fictionless experience. You need to have plug and, pay, plug and play possibilities, um, but you simply do not know for what you are doing all this. And I think what is very important is that you in future, that every company in future achieve some kind of digital maturity combined with a um, well-working customer relationship management. And I don't, I don't mean the software, I, I mean the relationship management. Um, but you are sim you cannot simply not be aware what, what will be um, the right initiative for you. And maybe if, it, if you know it today, you don't know it in, I don't know, in one year. So in general, you should be aware about all those topics to achieve the most important thing. Um, there are customers out there with all their concerns. And what you really would like to know is what are they concerned about? What, what do they like? What do, do they don't like? And then um, you're asking all those questions, why, when, how, what? And um, you, you need to get this outside in perspective. And despite that, you need to handle all those topics. And um, what is now, what could be now a possible solution? The, the first thing I already mentioned is, I think we should not stick anymore to principles. Um, it could be CRM, it could be customer experience, it could be a mixture of both, it could be definitely um, social CRM, uh, which is somehow settled so we know what we get there. Um, could be some kind of uh, customer engagement, whatever it is, I think you need to define this on your own. And um, yeah, let's, um, let's see what could be a possible solution out of 10, 20, 100, and um, I think one possible solution, for example, is a, a customer data platform that provides you, that allows you to have a mixture of it. And um, in the next slide, I will skip this one because it um, provides a lot of details. And it, as we are soon running out of time, I will not highlight everything here. But I think what is very important, a customer data, customer data platform could be a solution for this. And I, just in a couple of seconds, uh, try to explain or show you uh, how it could be set up. Um, the most important question is, do you make one on your own or do you buy one? And um, it's up to every company. I cannot, I don't know, I cannot advise you to, to make it or to buy it. Um, the only thing I could uh, I, I say is um, you should uh, do it with experience. You should know what you do. And sometimes it's, it's a good way to make some kind of data, customer data platform on your own to be experienced and then to buy one with the functionalities you really need because it uh, depends on every company. And here I provide you or I give you an, an insight on um, what we started at, at Tesa. And um, I just don't go into any detail here, but um, in, in general, I just, I, I just describe what we're doing. Um, what you see on the right side is how a customer can interact with us or with the company in general. And the idea is that whatever kind of interaction we have, we can categorize it or we can put it into parts or as I mentioned it here in the middle, we can put it into profiles. Name it however you like, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll just give an example on, on what I would like to point out. Um, if, for example, uh, let's take a generic example here, a person watches a specific product video on the company website. And what you see is, this is a common interaction and you can split it up in several parts. It's a question, where does the interaction took place? Who is the owner of the um, maybe existing profile? Maybe he's uh, not known so far. Um, but with cookies, we know also in future who, who was um, who, who was watching our product videos in the past. Um, why is the customer interacting with us, and um, how did the interaction take place? Um, you are able to to put all those information into into profiles, and then what you are able to do is you can monitor and describe those interactions. 
and then you get more into the details. You start to evaluate what kind of interaction is it really. For example, does the customer um, watch the video for more than 90% of total length? And maybe in a specific time frame, because you are currently, I don't know, running a campaign, um, you rate this with 10 points. And later on, and this is the engage uh, part, um, or can be the part where you engage your customer, you define, for example, with this knowledge, the content of a specific newsletter. And what I would like to, what I'm describing here is, what I'm describing here is, on the right hand side, you see what you could maybe describe as customer experience. Because what you really see is what is the customer doing when and when he has a bad experience, you're able to describe why, for example, I don't know, product video didn't start it or um, didn't provide the information he needed. And um, you see there is some kind of engagement part. It's not necessarily a newsletter. It could be something else. Um, and in the middle uh, is the CRM part because this is what we set up in our CRM solution. And what you see on the left side is a possible digital in initiatives you could start in future and CRM could be a possible solution to put the data in a structure you are able to learn from in future. So, and I think this is one possible solution to combine, for example, um, customer experience, customer engagement, CRM, social CRM, and um, future initiatives with one software solution. But as mentioned, this is only a suggestion, one possible solution. But the most important part I, I would like to highlight is, and it, this is uh, described down below, um, whatever you do, it's about learning. It's about learning from the customers. And if you're doing it with CRM, um, it's fine if you're doing it, uh, I don't know, yeah, sticking to a principle like um, customer experience, it's also fine. Um, the most important thing is that we start to learn from our customers and that it is some kind of social learning because we need to learn from each other. Um, a lot of companies um, made failures in the past, uh, like um, we were just spreading our knowledge out regarding uh, products and our services and don't care about and don't care about what, what the customer is thinking about it. So this was just a rough overview because we are somehow limited uh, of time, but I think there is a session later on where we could speak about it. Um, yeah, so this is my point where I started and where I now finish.